Let's bring in the panel, Keith Pitt and the wonderful Harry, Harry Gary Hargrave. Gents, I tripped over that one there. Let's start with education. <laughs> well <done>. Labor has <laughs> unveiled plans yesterday. They're going to wipe $3 billion from the hex debt. I declare I was the first year of uni in 1990 to pay the hex debt. So I speak from someone with experience. It's, it's a pain in the posterior, but I've always thought I get a good education out of it. I should be yep. paying something. That's not the view of everybody. If you've got a bachelor degree, you will earn more over your lifetime than someone, say, like my dad. He uh, didn't have a bachelor degree. Now, I sort of think, why should the tradie paying tax fund the university student that extra $3 billion? Is that fair, Keith? Oh, Peter, I, I paid it too. I paid it up front. I was fortunate enough to have some money in savings. It was a silly decision, actually. I should have taken the government's deck. Uh, <laughs> but let's call this for what it is. The Albanese government's cricket team of media spinners have been out telling everyone with a hex debt that their hex debt's going down. It's not going down. It's still increasing. Yeah. It's just the rate of the increase. The indexation is not as high as it would be otherwise. And the reason it's so extraordinarily high is the Albanese government can't get inflation under control. But credit where it's due, Peter. That's right. uh, Jason Clare is on to something when it comes to pracs. Uh, social work, for example, I had a look today. You do a 17-week prac, nine to five, five days a week. Uh, and for all of that, for free. And on top of that, you get a hex bill for that subject for $9,000. And I don't think social work pays all that extraordinarily well. I think the system's broken and it does need to be reviewed and fixed. Yeah, I do agree with that. But, I mean, we used to put nurses into hospitals to learn to be a nurse. Then we took them out of hospitals. Absolutely. And now we're going to basically pay them to do that work again. I mean, it's a, nothing's new. What about that loophole today we find out in those draft August laws, if we can, Gary, that we are going to take the, the nuclear waste from subs out of the UK and US and store them here in Australia? Now, I don't have an issue with that. We've got the land mass to do all of that. But this is one of the arguments that Labor has against nuclear power, well, what about the waste, they say? Well, if we can store the waste from submarines, surely we can store the waste from nuclear power here with the same principle. Yeah, I understand the general rule of thumb is if you make it, you take it. So if you make the waste, you take the waste. But look, you know, you're right. And these nuclear submarines are all going to be in themselves little nuclear reactors and they're going to be bobbing around our coastline, going to be visiting our various port cities. They're going to be made in Adelaide. There was that plan to have that Kimber, that town along the air highway set aside, uh, but the Indigenous mm -hmm. owners said... Uh, uh, balked at that uh, and that was at least a plan to deal with storage. Look, the Albanese government can't be in bo both camps. Uh, they're either going to be all for AUKUS or, uh, or against the concept of AUKUS. If AUKUS starts to bring in uh, nuclear power in the form of floating nuclear power stations, then we should be also considering nuclear power stations terrestrially, in other words, on the ground, and we also mm. need to have a plan for the waste. If we make it, we've got to take it. We have to deal with it. But, Peter, we're only talking about small amounts because what comes out of even a nuclear power station is relatively then reused, recycled, repurposed, and nuclear medicine, things mm -hmm. that give us X-rays and other procedures... That just doesn't come from a bush in the backyard. It has to come from somewhere, and it's good for Australia. Yeah. Keith, what the heck's going on with Snowy 2.0? This is the Turnbull boondoggle. It was going to cost us <laughs> $2 billion. It's up around 12 uh, Apparently, we had another issue with uh, Florence, I think her name is. The, the um, tunnel borer got stuck again. What's going on? Uh, uh, Peter, it's, <laughs> it is a Malcolm special. Uh, but I'm advised that Florence is still moving. It's about six <laughs> metres a day in very, very hard rock. And I saw oh, the yeah, reports Florence. of uh, a miscalculation yeah. in terms of blast and drilling that went into the nearby chamber and did a fair bit of damage. I think we're still waiting to see reports on what that will cost as an extra. But I'm still thankful that there are people in Australia willing to do this work. Uh, they're doing everything they can to keep them safe. There's no reports of injury, which I think is good news. Uh, but this is what happens. It, it was untested. They're uncertain of the cost, and now we know the cost is blowing out by an extraordinary number. This is what happens when you want to rely on intermittent yep. wind and solar, Peter. Jens, I've got to leave it there. Truth, as always, at the end. Thank you for your time.